Welcome to A Fresh Start with Dr. Bobby Mullins, Executive Director of Back to the Basics Ministries. At some time, we all need a fresh start. And each week on A Fresh Start TV program, you'll hear a relevant message straight from the Bible, providing examples and principles to show us how to start over again. Join us now for this edition of A Fresh Start as Dr. Mullins proclaims from the Word of God how to live the abundant life Jesus desires for all of us to experience. Jesus walked upon the earth on the shores of Galilee. He'd say to his disciples, let the little children come to me. I wonder if up in heaven you suppose we'll see little children ask him what was I supposed to be? What was I supposed to be? What were my eyes supposed to see? Why did I taste of death Before I even drew a breath And laid my head in my mother's breast to sleep? Oh, Jesus, what was I supposed to be? What was I supposed to be? What were my eyes supposed to see? Why did I taste the death Before I even drew a breath And laid my head in my mother's breast to sleep? Oh, Jesus, what was I supposed to be? Was I to be a prophet used in the ministry or a doctor who would find a cure for some terrible disease? And even if I'd been born imperfect, why couldn't my parents see that I'd have been made perfect, Lord, when you came back for me? Oh, Jesus, what was I supposed to be? What were my eyes supposed to see? Why did I taste of death before I even drew? a breath and laid my head in my mother's breast to sleep oh Jesus what was I supposed to be Jesus what was I supposed to be God help a man, forgive us for how we've sinned against you. Values of this world 
are twisted and even and in our minds we just can't find right or wrong anymore we spin to recycle keep our highways clear we're concerned about things like the earth's atmosphere and some even cry because the well may not always be here but we're killing our children it's time to cry for the children for their blood flows like a river in the name of it's my right but god knows each heartbeat he knows when every birthday should have been america please get back on your knees for the sake of our children Eyes that never saw mother Now gaze on the Savior Cries never made Are now cries of praise To the Lamb they adore Little hands that in death Were torn apart Are held by a hand That's been nail scarred Heaven now welcomes Innocent children We daily be Cause we're killing our children It's time to cry for the children For their blood flows like a river In the name of it's my right But God knows each heartbeat He knows when every birthday should have been America please Get back on your knees for the sake of our children. America, please, get back on your knees for the sake of our children. Here's Dr. Bobby Mullins. Wow, God knows each heartbeat. He knows when every birthday should have been. America, please get back on your knees for the sake of our children. I'm gonna bring a message today that I've titled, Treading on Sacred Ground. I remember a few years ago, a country music video by a group, McBride and the Ride. I don't know if I'll be able to remember all the words, but it went something like this. We got married in high school, had a baby when we turned 18. I'd bag groceries in the daytime and at night I learned to fix TVs. When you come by things the hard way, you learn to hold on tight. So just don't think you can waltz in here and take her without a fight. This isn't just some neon love come lately. It's a sacred thing you don't know nothing about. We were joined in the eyes of the Lord. In the eyes of our hometown, you better leave her alone. You're treading on sacred ground. The song is from the perspective of a man who married his high school sweetheart. They had it pretty tough for a while. But now some guy has come in and his wife has become involved with him. And so he's saying, buddy, you're treading on sacred ground. This is my wife. And he's going to do what he needs to do to get his wife back. Well, folks... There's been a travesty in this country that's been pretty dominant since 70, 1973, 1974 when Roe versus Wade helped to make abortions legal, at least to some extent in our country. I remember I majored in health and physical, edu physical education and health in college. If you majored in PE, you automatically minored in health. And my last year at the University of Tennessee, in the spring quarter, I was in a health issues class. There were only about 15 of us in there. About half uh, were women, half men, half were married, half were not. And I remember this issue of abortion came up. It was something that was brand new. And that day of the 15 in that class, only one was really for abortion. And the interesting thing about it, the one person 
who thought it was okay to get an abortion, really didn't have any problems with that, had been brought up, gotten saved when he was 10, brought up in a Southern Baptist church, had been taught the right things, but he'd gotten to a point in his life, uh, he wasn't living for the Lord. And you see, that was me. I was the only one in the class who supported abortion. At that time, I was what you would call a political liberal. But through the years and reading the Word of God and getting right with God uh, and, and trusting in what God's Word says, I've changed my opinion on most everything that I held back at that time. But you see, this fact about a woman has her right to get an abortion. Well, she does in our country, but that doesn't make it right. Because the womb is sacred ground to God. Notice what the Bible says in the 139th Psalm. And I'm going to read the King James Version. I'm going to read the original language. It's kind of poetic to me in the way that it reads. But verse 13, For thou hast possessed my reins, Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there were none of them. Folks, I tell you what, God knew what you were going to be before you were ever born, before you were ever conceived. And when there is life in, the, in a woman's womb, that's a life in God's eyes. Yeah, we've gotten to a point in our country, we really don't care what the Word of God says sometimes. We always talk about it. it's my right. You know, when people demand their rights, you have rebellion. But when people accept their responsibilities, you have revival. You know, we don't think a lot about this thing of abortion. But I was in college when the Vietnam War was at its height. And, uh, you know, a lot of people in our country were not for it. Most were. I supported those who fought, even had friends who died in Vietnam fighting for our country. But, you know, they, they made a memorial wall in Washington, D.C. I've never been able to see it. I've been to Washington a couple of times before they ever uh, built the Vietnam Memorial. But I understand that there are about 50,000 names on it. You know, you can get online. You can go through and look and see the name of someone. They have a memorial wall that travels from city to city. But it's in two sections of 245 feet with the names on both sides. So it's 490 feet in length. Again, containing about 50,000 names of those who died in Vietnam. I began to think a few years ago, you know, I sang in that song, God knows every birthday that should have been, every name that should have been of a child. What was I supposed to be, that first song, a child asking, what was my name? What would I have been? Well, if you built a memorial to all the babies who have been aborted on the same scale as the Vietnam Memorial, you could drive all the way from Knoxville, Tennessee, all the way across the plateau, all the way to Cookville, Tennessee, and in the middle of the interstate on both sides would be the names of the babies who've been aborted. What a travesty. And it's all because people say, well, it's my right to do with my body what I want to do. Well, the problem is you made your choice what you want to do with your body when you had sex and became pregnant. You know, even some are using it for birth control. People who are married who don't want to have children. And, and, and we've just, the, the sacred ground of the womb now is no longer what we see according to the Word of God. Now, folks, I may get to my, my message today. I've got an outline for this, but I've preached on this so many times through the years. But, you know, 
Usually about the third Sunday of January every year, we call it Sanctity of Life Sunday. And back in the 80s and 90s, we were really fighting this battle. And we've seen some victories as far as uh, the judges ruling that it's not legal, should not be legal to get abortions and all the things that go there. But you remember in that class, I mentioned at the beginning of this, only one out of 15 who was me was for abortion. Today, it would be at least 50%. Because you see, in our country, we have become almost we have become divided over this issue. Someone has said that America is fractured and fragmented into hundreds of little groups wanting their own rights, while nobody seems to care what happens to this country. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Someone else said, at the rate America is decaying morally. We shall have to change our national symbol from the eagle to the vulture. Now, folks, that's what the issue of abortion and others that have become so prevalent among us today. They're political issues, and people say you keep religion out of politics, but those political issues are moral and spiritual issues. Either the Bible is the Word of God or it isn't. Either all of it is the Word of God, or we can never be sure any of it is. It's either obsolete or absolute. If we have to start changing this verse, toning down that verse, apologizing for this verse and making allowances for that, we might as well give up. So we must take the Word of God as it is or leave it alone. You can't preach it like it is if you don't believe it like it was and still is. So we're at a point in our country today, you either need to believe the Word of God or you don't. Many people don't believe it, but those of us who do believe it, we have the right like any other American to fight for our beliefs and principles that I believe are what our, I, me and millions of others know that this is what our country was founded upon. You see, we're not to tolerate evil, but we're to abhor it. And the mood of the age today is that you put up with the evil, you allow it, and then you move on to play with it and finally practice it. And that's where we are in the history of our country today. I find myself all the time saying, I never thought I'd see the day when this would happen. Now, I'm thankful that regarding the issue of abortion, we have seen some positive gains in courts overruling uh, the right of a woman to get an abortion. But folks, when it's issues like this, some people call good evil, some evil good. Those who want their right sometimes don't care what's right, they want to win. And so that's where we are. In, the United States today when it comes to abortion. You know, what's the cause of abortion? Well, I put it four reasons. First of all, heart disease. The heart is desperately wicked. And so often, our minds know what, you can read the Bible and you can know what is right. It says that a preacher is to help people learn right from wrong to know what is right to do and what you shouldn't do. But we don't care today what the Word of God says. As long as it, we feel it doesn't hurt us, then we want to be able to get away with it. But our problem is today, we let these personal issues make decisions for us, and so it's heart disease, spiritually, that's caused abortion. Secondly, humanistic deception. Humanists, uh, uh, well, somebody has said that abortion is nothing more than the God of economics to some people. Forget that it's a life, but because they don't have the money to raise a child, to have a child and all, they just have the abortion and feel that that takes care of it. But one thing that I've learned as a minister that you have, you know, we're a Fresh Start TV program. At some time, y'all need a fresh start, and, and we're here to help people Learn from a biblical perspective how to deal with the fresh starts in life they need to make. And you need a fresh start when you've had an abortion and, and you become convicted for it and you want to start again. And they, teach, they tell some of the women uh, who are trying to get their hearts right, 
You'll get God's forgiveness if you ask forgiveness, but they tell them to name the baby that's been aborted. And so I found that as a minister, when a woman, and some of them aren't out to get right spiritually, but they still have a sense of guilt because they know what was inside of them is life, and they allowed it to end. Humanistic deception where man becomes God and makes the decisions. Thirdly, high-minded desires. That's a word that's used in the Bible for some Christians who get to the point they think they're know-it-alls. But someone who's high-minded in society feels, well, I don't care what everybody else thinks. This is what I want, and I, think I, uh, I don't think I'm going to get what I want. The high-minded desires. Another cause of abortion, half-hearted devotion. It's one thing to be a Christian with a fair reputation, but it's another thing to be sold out and surrendered to Jesus. And so many people who claim to be Christians are not sold out to Jesus, half-hearted in their devotions. Some are a part of churches that are one and done. You go to church once on Sunday and that's it for the week until you go back again. When many of us grew up in the era that church was a major part of our life several days a week at times. But today it's this half-hearted devotion. That's the cause of abortion. What about the cure for abortion? Or excuse me, the curse of abortion. Well, I've already talked about America as a country divided. You know, on just about all the issues of the, today, we're 50-50. Half the people believe one way, half the people believe another. And we believe so strongly when it comes to this. You know, I remember those years when at the abortion clinics, you have those who believed the right to keep that clinic open were there protesting for that right, and then you had the ones who were pro-life, and man, they were shouting at each other and all the things that would happen. But see, one of the problems today for us as Christians, how many churches today still even recognize the sanctity of life Sunday that, I mean, Thousands and thousands of churches did so in the 80s and 90s. Is it because what one generation fights, the next one tolerates? What one generation tolerates, the next one accepts. And what one generation accepts, the next one embraces. Have we gotten to the point as Christians we fought so much that we keep giving in and we keep giving in We've even given into this thing of political correctness, don't do anything that offends anybody, and now we don't even honor these basic days like Sanctity of Life Sunday. I can remember at one church I pastored in Memphis, if you participated, your church had a certain place on Poplar Avenue in Memphis, kind of like Kingston Pike in Knoxville. It ran for miles. And at a certain time, we were to have our certain area, and we were to join hands with others, and they were going to try to see how far that line could stretch across Memphis on Sanctity of Life Sunday of people being pro-life and saying that they were against abortion. What's happened to us? Have we won? No, we haven't won. Folks, this is a battle that we're going to stay in forever as society becomes more permissive. So the curse of abortion is a country divided a church diverted. But there is a cure for abortion. And I want to call on more ministers today. Men, we've got to get over the silly arguments that, that we're having today over whether Jesus died for all sinners or not. You know? That's one of the issues in my convention right now. And over whether praying a sinner's prayer is, is the right thing to do or not. I even read an article recently Five reasons why you ought to rethink the welcome time on Sundays in your churches. Because there are some people, they say some of the people who come to visit don't like it. Well, pardon me, but the Lord's Day is not about them. It's not about us, it's about Him. And I tell you, you ought to come together in a spirit of fellowship and thanksgiving on the Lord's Day. But the cure for abortion, you've got to get right with God. And first of all, we need to give God's free gift of salvation. Make it available to people as much as possible. Then Proverbs 4.23 says, uh, To keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. 
Be cautious about the things you listen to today. And somebody has said regarding sex and things like that, well, it's no longer a sin. If you do it before marriage or whatever, hey, when did God change his mind? Yes, it's still sin. God hadn't changed his mind. Number three, continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I tell you, friends, I'm almost 64 years old, but I want to continue to grow in the Lord. I, I became a Christian when I was 10, 54 years, but I still don't know it all. There's still so much more that I want to attain for the Lord and learn about Him. Number four, heed God's Word. A lot of people don't agree with God's Word. They don't like what it says because it infringes upon their rights in some way to do things you really shouldn't do. What's in this Word is for your good. God didn't put it here. His commands are not grievous. So heed God's Word. Let it help you make the decisions. There are some things you can say no to before you're ever asked about them because you know what the Word of God says. Then number five, hold your ground. We need to be strong in the Lord. We need to stick with the Lord. We need to stay with the Lord more than ever before. And this TV program, A Fresh Start, we want to help you to be able to make those fresh starts in life, but also grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then finally, the cure for abortion. Even though we're living in a day we feel like sometimes as Christians we're losing. Friends, we win. We win in the end. But never lose your hope. Always hope in the Lord. Because we know this, folks. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but all should be saved. But He always said that He would take care of His own. And so, my friends, today, as we talked about treading on sacred ground in some of the areas of life that people have now given over to the ways of the world, I pray that you'll live right within what the Word of God has to say and be able to say with me as I close this program out most every week, thanks be to you, O God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In addition to my work with Back to the Basics Ministries and a Fresh Start TV program, I'm also the pastor of Fellowship Baptist Church in Hernando, Mississippi, which is about 20 miles south of Memphis. We'd love to have you come visit with us for our worship service at 1030 on Sunday or at 530 on Sunday evening. We're just about two miles south of exit 284 that you take coming out of Memphis. Go to Highway 51, turn left, and we're about two miles down on the right in a two-story octagon-shaped building. About a half mile before you get to Fellowship Baptist Church, you'll pass under Interstate 69. We'd love to have you visit if you live in Memphis, Hernando, North Mississippi, or if you're just simply visiting in the Memphis area, come and visit us at Fellowship Baptist Church in Hernando, Mississippi. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to tune in next time for another inspirational word on a Fresh Start TV program.